With the release of HashiCorp Vault 1.14, we're able to provide secure integration of the entire PKI workflow with Vault acting as the Acme server for your existing Acme clients. For this demo, I'm using an HCP Vault cluster running on AWS as my Vault server, and I've deployed a separate EC2 instance on AWS where I've installed the Vault client and CertBot to serve as my Acme client. Here I am logged into HCP Vault, where I've enabled the PKI Secrets engine, and I've set things up with a root CA and an intermediate CA. Ordinarily, I would create the root CA in a separate PKI mount, but for demonstration purposes, I'm using a single mount. Note that the common name of my root CA is long lived root x1. I've also created a role that I can use to assign policies and set key parameters for certificates. The next step I need to take is to configure Vault to act as an Acme server, so I click on Configuration to set things up. First, I'll use the public URL of my Vault cluster to set the mount's API path. This includes our admin namespace. This address is used for the Acme directories. I'll include the same for this cluster's AIA distribution point. Next, I'll select the checkbox to enable Acme. And then under EAB policy, I'm going to select Always Required to ensure the security of my Acme service and to enable an automatic secure HTTP connection. This external account binding adds more security and control to the process of automating certificate management actions using the Acme protocol. And then I'll click Save, and I've successfully configured my Acme server. Since this demo is cloud-based, I'm now going to jump over to my EC2 instance to show how things run on the client side. This is where I'm running my Vault client and CertBot, which is my Acme client. From here, I'll run a Vault command that sets the required allowed response headers and tunes the mount for Acme in Vault. Then acting as a sysadmin, I'm going to fetch my EAB token which serves as a new Acme binding token by binding to my Vault session token. Remember, I configured EAB as always required for better security, unless this lets me tie ACL policy to a special token that Acme understands. So here you can see that the Vault server has returned ID response to be used as the key identifier and the key response for use as the HMAC EAB key in the Acme client. So next, I'll export those values to configure my client side. Now that I have Acme configured to enable secure transactions, I can run my client request for a certificate. And I successfully received my certificate. So let's take a closer look. I'll just run a quick command to parse the certificate. And when I scroll up, you'll notice we can tell it was issued by our Vault Acme server as it contains the common name of our root CA, long-lived root X1.